Okay. And finally, this is a spindle cell lipoma. This, these lesions often arise in men, um, and they're usually in the subcutis. And the most common site is the posterior neck or upper back shoulder region of middle-aged to older adult men. But um, as uh, Dr. Jennifer Coe and Stephen Billings and colleagues from Cleveland Clinic nicely described, um, definitely a subset of spindle cell lipomas can arise in women. And when they do arise in women, they tend to rise in unusual sites, not like the back of the neck or, or the upper back shoulder region. So it's good to keep that in mind that, that even though these are definitely much more common in men, women can also get them and sometimes get them in strange locations. So spindle cell lipoma has a wide range of features, but the main things that you're usually going to see are mature adipose cells, fat cells, bland spindle cells that kind of almost have a neural look. They look a lot like kind of the cells of neurofibroma, I think. And then the background is a mixture of collagen, usually kind of strands or ropey bundles of collagen, and usually some degree of myxoid change. Sometimes there's extensive myxoid change that makes these lesions almost look like myxoma. Other times the myxoid change is limited, but um, I find the myxoid change to be a very helpful clue for the diagnosis of spindle cell lipoma. And, but when it's abundant, I find that it often confuses pathologists. I've seen many cases sent in for consult because people were confused by why there was so much blue myxoid background. It's a common finding in spindle cell lipoma. So you're going to have variable amounts of those. Some cases, I have a lot of fat and only a little bit of the spindle cell and the ropey collagen. Other cases have almost no fat or even none at all. And those are the, the Dr. Billings, again, is like a, a published authority on spindle cell lipoma. Um, and he and Andrew Fulp wrote a paper um, together uh, in the past about low fat and fat free variants of spindle cell lipoma. So you can go check that out on PubMed that sometimes these lesions don't have any fat. Because again, even though the name says lipoma, these are not lipomas molecularly. They have different um, findings. They tend to have abnormalities or loss of the long arms of chromosome 13 or 16. So 13Q or 16Q loss. And they tend to usually have, because of that, um, a loss of one of the copies of the retinoblastoma gene, RB1. So if you do an RB1 stain on a spindle cell lipoma, oftentimes you'll find negative nuclear staining, loss of nuclear RB1 staining. Or you could do fish and it would show one copy of the RB1 gene um, uh, instead of the two copies, which would be normal. So that's not every spindle cell lipoma, but it can be a helpful clue if you're having a really challenging case. Most of the time, these are easy to recognize on H&E. The spindle cells are bland usually, unless um, you have a pleomorphic lipoma, which is on a spectrum with spindle cell lipoma, and they can have these big pleomorphic cells that are hyperchromatic and have reef-like multinucleation. I don't have one to show you today, but I'll have to do another video in the future on that. The spindle cells sometimes palisade. Sometimes it's very subtle palisading, and other times it can be very dramatic. And usually you're going to find some little mast cells floating around in the background. Um, see, look, here's palisading. There's four guys right alongside each other, or girls. I don't know if they're guys or girls here. And then look, those spindle cells, they're lined up with each other. Um, Dr. Weiss would tell me these are parallel arrays, which is, I think, a nice fancy way to say it. But I think of them as little tiny attempts at palisading. And oftentimes it's very subtle. But if you see, uh, the reason I bring this up is because the kind of vague palisading and the fact that some of the nuclei can look kind of bent or buckled like that makes you think of a nerve sheath tumor. So if you think something looks like a neural tumor and you do S100 and it's negative, you should think of spindle cell lipoma as a possibility because I think that a lot of times they kind of look like a neural tumor, but S100 will be negative in the spindle cells. These are probably actually fibroblastic tumors that just grow fat with them or grow into the surrounding fat, um, uh, again, rather than actually true fatty tumors. Here's some examples of the rope-like collagen bundles. Very nice. These are going to usually be CD34 positive. Okay. Like I told you, many different fibroblastic tumors can have CD34 expression. So I think most of the time these are diagnosable on H&E, but if you wanted to do something, CD34 can stain these. S100 might stain the mature fat cells. You know, depending on your clone, you'll, you'll see variable amounts of S100 staining in any sort of mature fat, but the spindle cells should be negative uh, for S100 in spindle cell lipoma, okay? So a really nice example of spindle cell lipoma, and these are um, benign and uh, don't cause any problems for the patient.